Welcome back to uh, The Daily Rundown with me, Mark Duffy. Now, um, a couple, oh, a group of parents who have become organised on social media under the slogan, let our kids be kids, have kept their children at home for the day today in protest against the standard assessment tests or SATs as we, as we all know them. Uh, the tests are for seven and 11 year olds and parents believe that they are stifling creativity and putting children under unnecessary pressure. The schools minister has said that there's no reason to be taking kids out of school and that it's damaging to their education. And uh, I saw this um, story earlier on guys and uh, you know, I, I thought SATs test, they, 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 can't, they can't be that difficult, really. And, and there shouldn't be any, any stress around them, admittedly. But, you know, it should just be what the children have learned up until that, that point. That's what they're designed for. Well, part of the, the problem is, is that actually um, schools, have been, it's, schools have been really unsure about what's going on. I mm. mean, it's been just basically described as chaos. Um, over the last, um, I mean, over the last term, there's about like practically every other day from the, um, from the Department of Education, there's been a different piece of guidance about uh, primary school testing. So, I mean, this is, so there's some, there's, it's all coming to a bit of a head now mm. because teachers aren't happy happy because it's not just parents saying that this is kind of pressing um, this is also affecting kids it's also teachers are saying that it's also um, affecting what they can teach um, because if you're doing exams you're not teaching but also it's pressing out things like music physical, physical education and arts from the curriculum mm. because it's um, and the big the, the most fundamental thing is about um, the was the government has said is well we need these to mm. um, to drive up standards but that's the question is do we um, not necessarily the, th the thing that's most important in terms of driving up stands is stands of teaching and stands mm. of curriculum how do you measure mm. how do you measure though the standards of teaching mm. how, how, how do you mm. measure that without testing what the children know I think it has to be age relevant. I think testing seven year olds on their uh, aptitude uh, uh, on the subjects that they've been taught so far is completely unnecessary and far too Americanized. Okay. Uh, we never used to do that in this country. Um, as you just said, it's always the creative elements of, of teaching that get cut first. Mm. Uh, art and music are essential to any human being in yeah. the world and to cut them. Um, I was talking outside uh, just earlier before we came on about this uh, exact issue because when I was at school, I'm 46 now, so I was uh, at secondary school in the early 80s, um, and geography for us was how our glaciers formed. Right. And uh, uh, how land masses are formed and mountains and things. I wouldn't call that geography. I wanted to know where India was and what was the capital. And that was. So I think mm. we teach children these days a lot of rubbish that they will never, ever need in life. And we take away the joyful things like mm. art and music. Okay. And we don't teach about life, and then we test yeah. them, which for children is a really high pressure situation, where they then measure themselves again to other children. Mm. Ah, she did better than me, so that means I'm she's she's better than me, just because she got some more answers right mm. on this standardised test. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with them. I mean, if, in the school system, though, you know, children will all start school at the same time, they're all getting the same lessons, and it's just a matter of finding out who's doing that, who's doing well, who's not doing well, why they're not doing that well, is it more support needed for certain children, or is it because the, the, the standard of teaching isn't, isn't up to scratch compared with some, somebody else in another school with this, exactly the same well, age range. Yeah. Well, it's kind of coming to, to what your kind of question is, well, but how do we know what's going on? Mm. It's also the big thing is like, we have to trust teachers more. That's the point is that there's a, a really weird contradiction in terms of what the government's doing about education at the moment. Because on one hand, it's saying we want to give schools autonomy and that also, for example, the idea of free schools to do some of the things that you're talking about actually. Mm. But then it's also 
so then the World School said, will turn around and say, it actually can come and say, well, actually, we've looked at the Finnish education system, thank you, and they, they don't believe in, t in testing at 7 or 11. Um, and actually, they do much better than us. So mm -hmm. that, then as your free school, that then you kind of turn around and say, well, actually, that's what we want to do. Then suddenly we get this pressure from the government at the same time to say, well, well, shut up, but actually, you've got to test seven-year-olds. It's, mm -hmm. that, it's that this, the, this is born out of the fact that the government has really split. On like one hand, it says to, it's talking about devolution to city areas at the moment, like right across the country, um, in terms of skills. Mm -hmm. But then it's not. But then it's also taking away. It's sort of in terms of forced academization, it's sort of talking about taking away power from from local people. So it's all born out of the kind of chaos. And one big thing that you don't want to do as a government is do not mess with parents. Parents are fierce. Mm. <laughs> do you think, though, to, to, yeah. to try and prove their point, mm -hmm. it was right for this group of parents to take away, uh, take their kids out of school for f just for one day to, 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 pro to protest at that? Absolutely. Is that the right move to make? Absolutely. I, I, anything grassroots, I completely agree with, always have done. Mm. I think people showing that they are powerful against bureaucracy uh, absolutely. Uh, if Will it the, change anything, though, Paul? Uh, I th well, we're talking about yeah. it on television. <laughs> it's in all the newspapers. It, it's so. If anything, it's raising awareness and it's making people think about and question: mm. Do we need to be testing our seven-year-olds in school, or do we need to be letting them develop as people, as human beings, mm. not? bound by this piece of paper which tells them how clever they are yeah. or not. Just sort of one quick point then before we move on. When is it right? When, when, when is the right age to start testing our kids on I, what they've learned? I think mid-secondary school. Okay. Uh, and then... So we're around the time of the Key Stage 3 SAT, yeah. so they, they, they then, do that in year nine, don't and they? And then that gets you ready and in preparation for your... For GCSEs. Yeah, 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 and yeah. then um, also, what, I mean, when I used to live in Denmark, I also taught as part of what's known as the free school programme there, which mm -hmm. is also, it's post 18. And quite often that's residential for six months. There's no exams as part of that at all, of that whole part of education. And that's a really mm -hmm. important thing too, because also they... So the, 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 young people have gone through that and say we trust you now we trust you mm. to develop yourselves and take responsibility for your own development your own leadership and your own education wonderful okay. wonderful mm. well we'll move on but thanks mm. very much again guys for that uh, the uh, business secretary Savid Javid has announced proposals to stop the limit or stop or limit employer deductions from tips this followed claims that some restaurant chains were regularly holding back some or all of the tips that were meant for their staff or even using them to top up the minimum wage. The Unite Union has said it was a victory for staff but should be backed into law. Currently, there is no legal requirement for firms to uh, hand over gratuities to their waiting staff. There are almost 150,000 hotels, pubs and restaurants in Britain employing uh, about 2 million people. It's a large industry um, and, you know, a service industry about tipping. Is, is it something that you guys do? Do you, do you tip for good service? I tip twice. Right, OK. Uh, went out for a meal just a couple of weeks ago uh, with a group of friends. Um, we kind of averaged out our, uh, as you do, oh, it's about £25 each. Mm. Um, we all put in about £28. Right. Uh, so that there was a general tip for the chefs and however the girl who'd been serving us all night, uh, I gave her a fiver directly in her hand and said, that's for you. Mm. And I know you'll get a share of this as well, but that's for you. Yeah. And she put it kind of straight into a pocket, which I expected her to do. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it's a service industry, isn't it? Mm. And they have to deal sometimes with difficult people shall we say <laughs> trying to make all our uh, experiences because because we do go to places like hotels restaurants bars that kind of thing um we go there to enjoy ourselves yes. and we kind of have an expectation of of what to you know to expect from the service there and if we get it then 
you know, I think I think we we will all tip. I think, absolutely. Yeah, but well, I think it's also really sort of just a quite a basic sort of cultural thing that yeah. also feels really sort of ingrained, doesn't it? Do mm. you go, um, and it's kind of fun because with this story, I mean, there's people like Jay Rayner in saying, well, it's a bit of an anomaly, it's a bit weird. We should probably actually get rid of the practice and say, mm. but I don't think you, I don't think you will get people to do that yeah. because that's just kind of it feels right. That's what we do, and that's because also you have, I think it's because you. Sort I feel like you have suddenly a very direct relationship is, 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 with is people. Is it a British thing, though? Is, is it something that we, that, that we kind of do? Or have we kind of adopted it from, like, the continent or, or maybe even America? The, the, you know, the process of, of tipping for I the service? Think, I, no, I don't, I, I don't think it has a, a, a birth nationality tipping. I think mm. it's just a human thing. We like to say thank you when someone has provided us with a good service. Yeah. Although, strangely, we don't do it in shops. No. Like you could go to, you know, insert famous shoe shop name mm. and spend an hour with somebody who measures your kids' feet and makes sure that they get the. And you don't tip them. No. But in bars and restaurants, but you do. Uh, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. kind of being. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think that sort of was what, what, was what Jay Rain was trying to say. But, um, but, I, but I think in terms of then, if you're looking about just simply about the wage, that is, that's mm. a separate issue. And I don't think that they should be sort of com- conflated. And then saying, um, saying, well, um, well, certainly this should not be used to top up the minimum wage. No. Also, well, because already we've got this thing about we're told that there's um, the living wage, which is not actually a wage that you can live on. You know, mm. so it's like, so it's sort of that's if you're to, if Savage Savage wants to um, wants to look at look at wages, well, they mm. should look at pr- a proper living uh, wage, uh, uh, and yeah, that's get ways. on with that, so we don't, crack we don't on have with that. Yeah. So rather than rather than making this kind of point, which is Oh, it's quite sort of industry specific, yeah. and you know. The, the, so the, I think to me those are kind of sort of separate okay. things. I think I think we'll all we all agree mm. that t- the tips, if we tip good service, should go straight to the people Absolutely. who do good service. Anyway, uh, we'll take another quick break, but do stay tuned because we've got uh, some chat and some music from the brilliant Chris Tavener up next. See you soon. <laughs> 